We would like to welcome you to this online worship service at Trinity. We are still in the Easter season. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Easter is a time which the church has set aside for 40 days to celebrate it. But every single day of our life, we can celebrate. Because our Savior lives. And so join with us as we praise this glorious and risen Savior of ours. Oh my God. 
During the Easter season, we celebrate life. That got me to thinking. One of the things which I always considered a miracle was the birth of our children. And you know, yes. you were there. I, I was there. And, and I think the most exciting part is once they arrive and they take that first breath on this side. And it's a miracle is exactly the word. And uh, we waited and listened for that. And at times they fussed, but then what well, happened? It seemed like once they were out and they did their little cry, their little wail, they wrapped them up in a blanket and, and handed the baby to me and the crying ceased. It was another little miracle. It was a joy, a child being held by its mother. Mm. And that reminds me a little bit with regards to our life in Christ. We who once were dead are now alive. Uh, life came to us. The Holy Spirit came to us. And we will talk about that in the gospel lesson as, as Jesus breathed on his disciples and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Something changed as the Holy Spirit came to them. And something changes as the Holy Spirit comes to us. We are given new life. But not just life. I love that image where you talked about how the children were placed in your arms. Did you enjoy that? Oh, it was, it was wonderful. After all that work of labor yeah. to be able to hold that child now in your arms that's, was, was wonderful. That's right. And yet I have this picture that, that God who has brought us new life, breathed life into us. He holds us in his arms and he comforts us. He doesn't leave us as orphans. And that is one of the joys that we have as Christians. We are not alone. And our prayer is that this God who has brought us life, who nurtures and holds us, we pray that other people would experience that as well. And so we invite you to join with us as we pray. Let us pray to our risen Savior on behalf of the church the world, and all people. Lord Jesus, we praise you for breathing your spirit and your peace upon us. We are humbled and honored that you give us your own work of pardoning the sins of all who are humble enough to seek forgiveness and grace. Give us the faith, the hope, and charity to believe, worship, and obey you always. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Breathe your Holy Spirit upon skeptics, doubters, and all those whose confidence in your grace has been shaken by tragedy. Use us to lead them gently into your arms, to your house. Lift them with your wonderful hands. Transform their doubts and unbelief into unshakable faith. In you, their Lord and Savior. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. The other disciples sought out Thomas when he was grieving and he was in despair. Teach us to be your disciples, seeking out and walking with others, even when they despair of your love. Give us grace to be gentle, patient, yet persistent as we invite them to taste and see your goodness. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Bring the peace of your forgiveness, the peace of healing, 
and the peace which surpasses all understanding to those who are troubled in heart, mind, or body. In our prayers for today, we lift up Priscilla, Spiro, Henry, and his whole family. We think of Rachel, along with Mike and Mary. We remember Louise, Carl, Eunice, Barb, Norm, Sally's friend, and Anne and her sons. For these people, as well as all others that we have in our hearts and minds, be with them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Risen Savior, continue to give us everything that we need for a life of praise and service to you. Also give us everything we need to love our neighbors as we should. All this we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Brianna? Yeah. You know what? What? Do you know that Jesus died for you? And me? Did you know that? Did you know that one time a year we celebrate a birthday? Your birthday, my birthday, one time a year. Can you help me blow out those candles? One more. One more. Good job. So we blow out those candles and we celebrate a birthday, right? But you know what? In the Bible, it talks about now you're in a painful situation. This is Jesus talking to his disciples shortly before he died. You're in a painful situation, but I will see you again. Then you will be happy and no one can take the happiness from you. So the thing about Easter that is so exciting is that we can have a little Easter every single day of our life. That means that Jesus came and he died on a cross and three days later, what did he do? Died. He rose from the grave. Yay! He came back to life, right? And we celebrate birthdays once a year. We can celebrate Easter every single day of our life. Do you want to sing a, a song with me? Listen, let's do this one. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes. Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. So as much as I love Brianna, you know what? Jesus loves you even more. So next time you celebrate a birthday, remember every single day we can celebrate Easter, right? All right. Thanks for being with me. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed. and the 
mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes, a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, what a Savior! Isn't He wonderful? Sing hallelujah, Christ is lesson comes from the fourth chapter of Acts. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and much grace was upon them all. There were no needy persons among them, for from time to time those who owned lands or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone as he had need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson comes from the letter of 1 John. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared, we have seen it and testified to it. And we proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, 
God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word has no place in our lives. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to the 20th chapter of St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. See? 
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Heavenly Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Fear is a powerful emotion. It can imprison us. It can haunt us. It makes it hard for us at times to make decisions. And this is not just true with people. The first two congregations where I served as pastor were in western North Dakota. After moving there, we went to visit a family that lived in the country. They had children about the same age as our children. While we were there, the children were playing outside and the adults were inside. And then all of a sudden, the children burst into the house with excitement. Isaac, caught a bunny, Isaac caught a bunny. Isaac was our oldest child. He was five years old or about five years old at that time. And hearing him catch a, a bunny, we envisioned this newborn rabbit that, that he was able to pick up. But to our surprise, when we saw the rabbit, it was three quarters grown. And I was thinking, there is no possible way that Isaac should have been able to catch that rabbit. That rabbit could run faster than Isaac or any of the other children there. It was, it was almost fully grown. It surprised us. However, later on, we learned that the family dog was there as well, and the hound frightened that rabbit, so much so that it froze in place and I suppose that rabbit thought it would be better to be picked up by a five-year-old boy than to have a dog bite it. There is fear in this world. Not just animals experience that you and I as humans do as well. And we see this being the case in the gospel lesson for today. We read, On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came in and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Please notice that Jesus' disciples were in a locked room. Why? Because they were afraid. They were prisoners of fear, uncertainty, and guilt. They also had doubt. And that held them captive. It was not only Thomas who didn't believe that Jesus had been raised from the dead, but every other disciple as well. From the Gospel of John, we assume that they must have heard from Mary that Jesus appeared to her because Jesus told Mary, tell my brothers, tell the disciples you know, that he had been raised from the dead. But there they were, that very same day, in the evening, with doors locked. Why? Because they were afraid. Fear is a powerful force. In their case, it was understandable. Jesus was arrested. There was an angry crowd around, and he was tortured by the Romans. And Jesus warned them the night that he was betrayed that if they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. And he reminded them that a servant is not above their master. They might have also heard what happened to Peter. You remember Peter on the night which Jesus was betrayed. He, he tried to, to sneak in and, and see what was happening with Jesus. But he was spotted. He was found out even though he tried to lay low. So much so that three times he had to deny Jesus. Peter learned that laying low was not easy. And it did not guarantee that you would not be found out or spotted by someone in the crowd. Fear of pain, of torture, or death can imprison you. Fear of an unknown future can make it hard for you to make decisions. But as I mentioned, there were probably other feelings that the disciples had also that evening that held them captive. 
I think some of them were guilt and doubt. They had guilt because they had forsaken their teacher. How could they show their face in public anymore when everyone knew that they were followers of Jesus and yet they had abandoned him? They had doubt. Mary said she saw Jesus. The other women reported that an angel had told them that he is alive. However, they did not believe the message, even though they saw Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead. Now, today, as we look at the disciples of Jesus, I would like you to think about the present-day disciples of Jesus. That includes you and me. We are like the first disciples in more ways than we care to admit. Why? Because we, too, can become hampered imprisoned, or at times it becomes hard for us to make decisions because there is fear. Fear arises when there is uncertainty with regards to the future. We fear pain. I have heard reports that anxiety prescriptions are off the chart this year, and it's not just because of the pandemic. People for a while were scared to even be with other people. And uncertainty about the future is also a culprit which brings anxiety into the lives of people. But there are other things which can impact us. There's the potential of being shamed or letting others down. Others fear repercussions for past mistakes which they have done, or maybe a habitual sin which they are committing, and they wonder, Will God really forgive me for what I've done in the past or what I'm continuing to do today? We may also have our doubts. It is not only Thomas in the Gospel lesson for today which doubted the the promises of the Old Testament or doubted the, the testimony of the women or the other disciples after Jesus appeared to them. Doubts can arise in our hearts and minds as well. Is the Bible true? Can we trust it? Will God fulfill his promises for us in Jesus Christ? At times, we may be shaken because of what's going on in this world, and and it impacts how we trust in our Lord. We may be shaken because what's happening in our lives, in our families, or in our country. And at times, fears can paralyze us. All of these things made the first disciples hide behind locked doors. And maybe we at times would like to do the same, kind of stay hunkered down. But as we gather here today, there is good news. The first disciples who were hiding because of fear had Jesus come to them. He entered that self-made prison. The fear, guilt, doubt, and locked doors would not stop Christ from coming to his disciples. And when Jesus entered, what did he say to them? Peace be with you. How strange a greeting this is. After all, they had deserted him. They abandoned him. They left him for dead at the hands of the Romans. But just so that they would understand, Jesus repeated it one more time. Peace be with you. And then he continued, as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. The Son of God breathed on his disciples that life-giving breath of the Holy Spirit, bringing them forgiveness and and strengthening their faith. I, I find this text amazing. In the midst of their guilt, in the midst of their fear and anxiety and shame, in their being locked up, Jesus came to them and continued to look at them as his disciples. He forgave them their sins and he restored them so that they could have joy. And then he commissioned them to go forth with this new life that he has given to them. And it's all possible because of the peace which Jesus brought them. And not just them, 
but also the peace which he gives to you and me. It's not just any peace, the peace that the world can give. It's a resurrection peace, which is assured because Jesus died for our sins and he arose. And because of that, we can have the abundant life now with God, and we can have the thrill of, of eternal life in the future. Now, the disciples, upon seeing Jesus and hearing those words of, of peace and forgiveness, it moved them from fear to rejoicing. And that is what I would like you to also follow, not just today, but every day of your life. Don't allow the fear of the future or past mistakes or doubts to keep you in prison. Christ comes to you and me just like he did to the first disciples, but maybe in a little different way. He comes to us in his words. He comes to us because the promise is whenever two or three are gathered in my name, I will be there with you. Jesus comes to us in baptism and in the Lord's Shepherd, assuring us again of that peace which he won for us on the cross. And having this peace, what does Christ tell us to do? Well, he encourages us to share it. After rejoicing, he gives us a purpose in life. And he sends us out. As the Father sent Jesus, so Jesus sends you and me, just like the first disciples. And he sends us to do many things. To care for the sick, to teach the young, to warn those who are doing wrong, to share with those who are in need, to bring back those who have wandered away. And above all, he sends you and me to forgive others. In the Lord's Prayer, we say, forgive us our trespasses or sins as we forgive those who trespass or sin against us. And I think one of the greatest ways that you and I can celebrate Easter is by forgiving others and letting others who are held captive by, by guilt and shame and sin to know that in Jesus Christ, there's peace. There's release from that prison. That's how we celebrate Easter by rejoicing in it, but also sharing that good news about how it changes people's lives. At the beginning of this message, I talked about how our son Isaac, when he was five years old, caught a rabbit, but I didn't tell you what happened next. Actually, we let that rabbit go without the dog there, so the rabbit did not have to worry about the dog biting it. And the rabbit was able to run free. I think about that. That day that, that Isaac picked up that, that scared rabbit and then released it. And I want you to picture, in your mind, Christ coming in and picking you up. Picking you up in his arms to comfort you. Giving those promises which we have in the gospel that because of what he has done, you have peace now and forever. But after Jesus comforts us, he, he puts us down so that we may go forth with joy. So that we may impact the world which is around us. He has given us purpose in life. But also remember that Jesus never leaves us. Each and every day, he is there to pick us up and to, to encourage us and to comfort us and then to send us out with his power so that the joy of Easter may become evident in the lives of others as well. Yes, fear is a powerful emotion, but far greater than any fear is the love that Jesus has for you and the peace which he brings you. So rejoice in it and share it with others. Amen. Haunted by God
those that lived in my past bound up in shackles of all my failures wondering how long is this gonna last Then you look at this prisoner and say to me, son, stop fighting a fight that's already been won. I am redeemed. You set me free. So I'll shake off these heavy chains Wipe away every stain Cause I'm not who I used to be I am redeemed All my life I've been called As we continue, we invite you to join with us as we pray the prayer which Jesus himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue to celebrate Easter. For 40 days and then 40 days beyond that and 40 days beyond that. It's a celebration. I appreciate what you said every day. 
we celebrate Easter because God has given us life. And so go forth now with the blessing of the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thank you.